Franklin Delano Floyd, a name that sends chills down the spine of those who know his story, was not just a murderer and kidnapper. Shockingly, he also married a woman who, unbeknownst to many, was his kidnapped daughter. This is a story that pushes the boundaries of human comprehension, a tale that veers dangerously into the realm of the unthinkable. Franklin Delano Floyd, a man whose criminal resume spans the gamut from murder to kidnapping, was also a man who committed an act so grotesque and so far beyond the pale that it leaves one grappling for words. In a twist of events that sounds more like the plotline of a twisted Hollywood thriller than the happenings of real life, Floyd, in an audacious bid to escape his past, married Suzanne Marie Savakis, a woman who, unbeknownst to the world, was his kidnapped daughter. Yes, you heard that right. Floyd, in a move as shocking as it was unfathomable, married his own victim. The woman he had abducted, the woman he had tormented, was now his wife. But this twisted tale doesn't begin there, let's go back to the start. Floyd's life of crime started early. Born in Georgia, his troubled childhood saw him placed in a children's home and subjected to abuse. A sad and unfortunate beginning indeed, but even in these early years the seeds of a sinister future were being sown. Franklin Delano Floyd was born into a world of hardship and despair. His family, unable to provide for him, left him in the care of a children's home. This place, which should have been a sanctuary, a refuge, was instead a hotbed of abuse and neglect. Young Floyd was subjected to a harsh environment that no child should ever have to endure. The impact of these early experiences cannot be overstated. The trauma, the lack of a stable, nurturing environment, the absence of love and care, all of these factors played a significant role in shaping the man Floyd would become. But it was not just the abuse that marked Floyd's early years. The young boy was also introduced to the world of crime, an introduction that came far too early in his life. His exposure to this harsh reality was a bitter pill to swallow, and it would prove to be a precursor to a life of criminality. As he grew older, Floyd found himself drawn to the darker corners of society where rules were broken and laws disregarded. Here in this underworld, he began to develop a taste for manipulation and control, particularly over women which would later become a defining characteristic of his criminal career. It's important to remember that these early experiences don't excuse Floyd's horrific actions, but they do give us some insight into the making of a man who would go on to commit unthinkable crimes. Floyd was a product of his environment, shaped by the trauma, neglect and abuse he suffered as a child. His early life was a spiraling descent into crime, a descent that would only get worse. As we delve deeper into the life of Franklin Delano Floyd, we'll see just how much worse things got, and the devastating consequences of his actions. Floyd's criminal history is as long as it is disturbing. He escaped from prison multiple times and had numerous convictions for kidnapping and child molestation. From the beginning, Floyd seemed destined for a life of crime. Born in Georgia, he was placed in a children's home at a young age, a place where he was subjected to abuse that would leave scars on his psyche. This troubled upbringing served as a springboard for a criminal career that would span decades. Floyd was not just a criminal but a master manipulator. His rap sheet is filled with instances of deception and control. He had a knack for assuming various aliases, a tactic that allowed him to slip through the cracks of the law enforcement time and time again. But it was his ability to manipulate and control those around him, particularly women, that made him truly dangerous. His criminal record is a litany of horrifying acts. There were numerous instances of kidnapping often involving young children and multiple charges of child molestation. But these were not the actions of a man acting on impulse. Each crime was meticulously planned and executed, a chilling testament to Floyd's cunning and ruthlessness. Despite his growing record, Floyd managed to evade the law multiple times. He was no stranger to the inside of a prison cell, but he was equally familiar with the art of escape. On more than one occasion, Floyd slipped away from the authorities, only to reappear under a new alias and continue his life of crime. While these crimes are disturbing in their own right, they only scratch the surface of Floyd's dark history. As we delve deeper into his life we find acts of such depravity that they are almost unimaginable. But these were not the actions of a man spiraling out of control. They were the calculated moves of a man who knew exactly what he was doing. But Floyd's darkest acts were yet to come. Among his most heinous crimes was the kidnapping of Suzanne Marie Savakis, a young girl he would later rename Sharon Marshall. In a chilling turn of events, Floyd, who had been living a life of crime, set his sights on a new, unthinkable act. 
He chose to kidnap Suzanne Marie Savakis, a young, innocent girl who had her entire life ahead of her. This wasn't a random act of violence but a calculated cold-blooded move by Floyd. He saw in Suzanne a means to an end, a tool for his twisted machinations. Suzanne was not just kidnapped, she was stolen from her family, from her life, and thrust into a world of fear and manipulation. Floyd did not just change her circumstances, he changed her identity, renaming her as Sharon Marshall. This was not just a new name, but a new life, and not one of her own choosing. This act of renaming was a powerful tool of control for Floyd, a way to erase Suzanne's past and shape her into the person he wanted her to be. But why did Floyd take this drastic step? There could be many reasons but one stands out, control. By kidnapping Suzanne and renaming her, Floyd was able to exert complete power over her. He manipulated her into believing that he was her only hope, her only protector in a world that had abandoned her. This psychological manipulation is a common tactic among abusers, designed to make the victim feel helpless and dependent on their captor. But Suzanne was not just a victim. Despite the unimaginable horror she was subjected to, she showed remarkable resilience. She was a fighter, a survivor. But her fight was far from over. Floyd's decision to rename Suzanne as Sharon Marshall was a clear indication of his intention to control every aspect of her life. It was a cruel act, designed to erase her past and force her into a new, terrifying reality. This was not just a kidnapping, it was a complete and total theft of a young girl's life. The kidnapping of Suzanne was just the beginning of her nightmare. In a deeply disturbing turn of events, Floyd would later marry the very girl he kidnapped and raised, Suzanne, now known as Sharon. In an egregious display of his manipulative prowess, Floyd managed to convince Suzanne that they were destined for each other. This twisted union marked yet another chapter in Floyd's life filled with deceit, manipulation, and an utter disregard for human dignity. Suzanne, or Sharon as she was now known, was forced into this perverse matrimonial bond, a clear testament to Floyd's insidious control. This was a man who had not only stolen her childhood but was now robbing her of her future. The marriage was a chilling reminder of Floyd's ability to manipulate those around him, turning them into pawns in his macabre game. One can only imagine the torment that Suzanne must have undergone, trapped in a marriage with her captor, the very man who had stolen her from her family. Yet, Floyd's cunning had so completely deceived Suzanne that she found herself complicit in her own subjugation. This marriage was far from a conventional union. It was rather a sinister plot contrived by Floyd to further ensnare Suzanne in his web of lies. He used the marriage as a guise to further his criminal activities, using Suzanne as a shield to deflect any suspicion. In this depraved relationship, Floyd continued his cycle of abuse, exerting his control over Suzanne in every possible way. She became a victim not only of his kidnapping, but also of his emotional and psychological torment. Floyd's decision to marry Suzanne was not an act of love, but a strategic move to further his control and cover his tracks. It was the ultimate testament to his manipulative abilities and his complete lack of empathy. But even this was not the end of Floyd's monstrous acts. For years the whereabouts of Suzanne's brother Philip remained unknown, adding another layer of mystery to Floyd's dark tale. This lingering question mark cast an even darker shadow over Floyd's already sinister narrative. Philip's disappearance became a chilling subplot, a mystery within a mystery, that kept true crime enthusiasts and investigators alike scratching their heads. It seemed as though Philip had vanished, swallowed up by the same darkness that had claimed his sister. However the mystery would not stay unresolved forever. Nearly three decades later in the year 2019, an unexpected turn of events occurred. A man came forward claiming to be the long-lost Philip. DNA tests were conducted and the results? A match. The man was indeed Philip, Suzanne's brother, bringing a degree of closure to this haunting chapter. Yet even with this revelation the full extent of Floyd's heinous acts still remains obscured. Franklin Delano Floyd's life is a chilling testament to the darkest corners of human behavior.